In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the Durbin-Watson statistic, and I'm also going to show you something about it so that you get a sense for what it is. The Durbin-Watson statistic is basically based on the residuals and whether there's a correlation between case and the magnitude of the residual. And that's why I mentioned in the textbook that it's more about time type studies that you'll see the Durbin-Watson statistic used. Now, in this particular case, I actually ordered from lowest to highest the residuals in the data file because I was interested in looking at it in that way. By doing so, I will necessarily get a Durbin-Watson statistic that is deviant from the value 2. You'll recall from the textbook, a Durbin-Watson statistic can range from 0 to 4. And when there's the total absence of a serial correlation in the data, the Durbin-Watson statistic will be 2. Well, in this case, because I ordered the residuals from lowest to highest, the Durbin-Watson statistic is going to suggest that there's some kind of ordering. So if you go into Analyze Regression Linear and put Education as the independent variable and Earnings per Day as the dependent, click on Statistics and Durbin-Watson, you'll see that a very small value is obtained in the Model Summary table, Model Summary, Durbin-Watson 0.100, and that's basically telling me that there is a correlation, and I'll show you, there is a correlation between the residuals and ID number. So ID plus unstandardized residuals is correlated 0.939. Basically, the Durbin-Watson statistic is a correlation between case number and ID number. I've got ID from 1 to 40. And you can see the residuals going from negative 108 to 160. Now, in this data set, it doesn't make any sense to really look at Durbin-Watson because I just have cases that they should be just random. It doesn't matter who I tested first and input it into the data file. Now, to show you that this is true, I'm going to create a random variable to order the cases in a random way. So I'm going to call it random. And I'm so I'm going to use the random variable dot t function to create this random variable. Here it is. And I'm going to put the ID variable in there. I could use any variable. I'm just putting case ID in there. OK. And a new variable has been created called random. And I'm going to sort that random variable from top to bottom to disorder the residual variable so that there's a mixture of negative and positive values throughout. So now the Durbin-Watson statistic should get closer to 2.0. Regression, linear, click OK. And you can see that now the Durbin-Watson is 1.937. So the relationship between the magnitude of a residual and the case, or the row, from 1 to 40 is, has disappeared. So that's what the Durbin-Watson statistic is. It's basically a correlation between the residuals and the rows presented in the data file.